Hello, I'm Steve Rossetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix Guide to CyberLink Power Director. And here we are in our Power Director project in progress. We've added media to our media room here and we can begin to make our movie. Now naturally you could just grab these and drag them down to the timeline and go at them, start putting together your movie. But before we do, I want to take a look at some of the other options that are available here in our media panel. Now I have these as relatively small icons. That's because I tend to work with an awful lot of media files at once and it can be very complicated to try to look for one clip when you've got a hundred of very large icons but you can control the icon size or the thumbnail size either by using this slider here at the top of the screen or by clicking on the options button and selecting small medium or large icons there's some medium icons there a little easier to see now you have the option of filtering your media files in case you get too many you can look at only your video, only your audio, or only your images, or all media. There are also options in here for adding backgrounds. These are some custom backgrounds that are available, along with PowerDirector, they're kind of cool, especially if you got slideshows that are maybe floating over those backgrounds. You also have the option of grabbing color boards, which are, there you go, solid color backgrounds, or panels that you can use in your video. You can also download some from the director zone, which we'll take a closer look at a little later in the program. But right now, let's just take a look at the media that we've imported into our movie. But before we add these clips to our timeline, I want you to notice a couple of options that are available here. Remember this clip? This is the one we captured from our camcorder and it did not break into scenes. So we actually have several scenes in here punctuated with black between them. The program can automatically break those into individual clips for you based on the scene breaks. So let's just click on that. And when we do, the program will automatically detect the individual scenes. And when we click OK, our media panel now has a subfolder here. This is what this up one level means. And inside the subfolder, that larger clip is now six individual clips. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go upstairs. And to get back into that folder, we simply click on the little folder icon in the corner here. It'll take us back into the individual scenes. You also have the option of doing sort of a smart analysis of a clip. So let's take this clip here of this plane landing. And if I click on content aware editing, I can either do this this way or I can select the clip and open up the content aware details editing place. But then you got to remember the name of the clip, okay? So I kind of prefer to do it this way. Go back to medium icons and just select this option to edit in content aware. And when you do, the program runs an analysis on the clip and you can see that it saw that there's some movement. That's what it registers as pan. It might register as zoom. It's got some shakiness in here might be some motion or some poor lighting. So it's making recommendations on which part of this video actually looks good and which part might have some issues. And you do have options, in fact, you'll see in just a moment of getting rid of some of those problems. So for instance, if I only want to use a small portion of this clip, I can set my playhead to here, click in point, set my playhead to here, and set my out point. And when I click on the selected button, I do have the option here of fixing the poor quality. In other words, it's going to apply a stabilizer to it to get rid of some of that shakiness. In this case, let's go ahead and say yes. And now you see it has created a subclip here that is only this small selected area and it has applied a fix to it, a smart fix here where it has taken out some of the shakiness because it saw some shaky issues in the video. So if I click OK, that clip gets added here to my timeline. Let's zoom in on the timeline a little so you can see it. It's a very short clip. If I hold my mouse cursor over that little eye, I can see information. You can see that it has added the stabilizer to it. And if I double click on that, it opens up this designer area where I have access to controls over many more effects. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. The main takeaway from this is that you can pre-trim your videos before you add them to the timeline. Now this would be especially helpful if you say you had five minutes of a bride and groom dancing, but you only want to use a 30 second segment of it. No reason to put that on the timeline. You could put it on the timeline and trim it there, but it makes much more sense to go into the trimmer, pre-trim it, and then bring that new clip down to the timeline, 
already trimmed down to just the meat, just the really good stuff. So now we have our media clips. We've pre-trimmed one of them here. We've, we've corrected some issues with the video clip. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and play that as I'm talking here. You can see it's taken a lot of the shakiness out of it. It's a very short clip. Look how smooth that is now. It has taken the shakiness out of it with its stabilizer and pre kind of cleaned it up before adding it to the timeline. Now in part four of our eight part basic training series, we are gonna take you to actually editing, actually adding things to our timeline. We'll take a look at that in our next segment, part four, basic training with CyberLink PowerDirector. I'm Steve Grisetti, hope to see you in part four here at moviepix.com.